quality outcomes of water sanitation and hygiene interventions. Um, my name is Sarah Dickin and I'm based at the Stockholm Environment Institute. And I'd like to all to wor warmly welcome you all here today. I'm gonna get started as we have quite a full session and we'd like to ensure as much time as possible for the participatory discussions. So my role today is to give you an introduction to the session aims and the program, and then I'll pass it over to the team who will take us through the session. So next slide, please. Great, thank you. Um, so first I'd like to touch on why today's topic is so important. Um, so as many of you know, SDG five on gender equality and women's empowerment and SDG six on water and sanitation are separate goals, but at the same time, they are inextricably linked. Um, and there's increasing awareness that to achieve both of these goals, there's a greater need for gender as well as socially transformative interventions to wash. And these are approaches which address what may be the hidden drivers of inequality, um, like transforming power dynamics or um, addressing harmful gender norms. So that brings us to the aim for today's session. In order to design WASH interventions that advance gender and social equality, we need high quality information on what works and also what doesn't work. There haven't really been that many in-depth reviews of the evidence on this topic so far. Um, so the first aim of the session today is to address this gap in our knowledge base by sharing findings from a comprehensive review on gender and social equality outcomes of WASH interventions. Um, and so before we go any further, I also want to clarify what we mean by that term, gender and social equality outcomes. Um, so we're uh, talking about outcomes or impacts um, resulting from WASH interventions that contribute to gender equality, as well as outcomes that contribute to broader social inclusion. Um, so for example, an outcome could be increasing decision-making opportunities for women um, or people with disabilities, people from marginalized um, ethnic or religious groups, um, sexual or gender minorities, for example. Um, and in reality, many of these outcomes are actually intersecting and overlapping. Um, and so for short, throughout the session, we often refer to them as GSC outcomes. Um, so we'll have an interactive presentation um, of the review findings. Um, and then the other session aims are to identify and prioritize um, needs for future practice, uh, policy and research, particularly uh, relating to monitoring and evaluating interventions. And then we also aim to collect your feedback, your reflections, your thoughts, um, on a theory of change for how WASH interventions lead to change uh, in gender and social equality outcomes. And we'll collect some of your own experiences and stories of change. Next slide, please. So this is just an overview of the program for today. So we'll start with uh, a presentation about the review methodology and then an interactive presentation about the findings. Um, and then we'll have quite a large uh, chunk of time for breakout groups um, on different outcomes. Next slide, please. Um, so today we're gonna be using Mentimeter. I'm sure that some of you have used this before. Um, for those of you, um, yeah, you, you probably know how to get on this, but otherwise um, you use your phone to scan the QR code, or you can go on the computer um, to the link menti.com. And then the important thing is to enter the code that's shown here, 92528723. And I think someone has pasted it as well, the link to the Mentimeter in the chat. So feel free to go to that link um, and or join on your phone. Either way works. And uh, I think we can go to the next slide and see if people are able to get on. So the first question then on the Mentimeter, let's see if it's working for everyone. Um, you can answer this question here uh, about where you're based or, and or uh, the regions that you're working in. So please give that a shot. I can see that uh, 
people are able to get on here and I see some, some answers so far coming in from a few different regions. Great, so it looks like we have uh, most regions represented um, and you can all get onto the Mentimeter, so great. Um, so I'm just gonna quickly introduce you to the team. Um, so on, on the left here, we have um, the team who's been conducting the review, like screening articles. Um, and then on the right, we have our advisory board who have been providing critical support for the direction um, of the review. Um, you can also see in green, the names highlighted in green are presenters today. So we have Biliana Makura, we have George Noraje, Ariana Orlando, Naomi Carrard, and then breakout groups. We have Odenisa Fadhila, Jess MacArthur, Ella Foggett, Hugh Waddington, and Louisa Gosling. We also have our communications expert, Brenda Ochola, uh, shown in yellow. And you'll be meeting the team members throughout the session today. So one last question before I pass it on uh, to Biliana for the presentation. Um, it's just to get an idea of where we all are. Um, so I'd just like to see who has been involved with an evaluation of a WASH intervention. Um, this could be from the practice side, from implementation, or as a donor organization, or as a research team. So just like to see who's been, who has done an evaluation, who has not done an evaluation. Great, so it looks like um, we have a bit of both. Um, some participants here today have done maybe like just over half have been part of an evaluation, but we also have a group of participants who haven't been part of an evaluation. So I think this is a good mix um, to continue our uh, session. So now I'd like to pass it over to Biliana Makura, who's gonna take us through today's presentation. Thank you very much, Sarah, um, and welcome everyone from my side as well. So <clears throat> I would like to introduce um, a little bit more about reasons for why we are doing this um, review. Um, as uh, many of you know, as, as we saw that many of you already uh, have done or attempted a WASH um, evaluation um, and they will they will know that um, often these evaluations focus on public health outcomes such as the diarrhea. Uh, this is also mirrored in existing wash evidence synthesis that often have no explicit focus on gender, education, and other uh, social outcomes. And Sarah already um, explained briefly why is this so very important for all of us here today. Um, gender is um, often only a contextual factor in wash interventions. Um, either design or adaptation, but really not uh, measured. Um, gender outcomes are really not measured uh, that often during um, implementation of uh, WASH interventions. Um, and also in the synthesis. Uh, the reviews that explicitly focus on social outcomes are often uh, narrow um, on, on scope or, or nowadays outdated. So therefore we are answering with this review, we are trying to bridge this um, synthesis gap. Um, next slide, please. Um, we are not only trying to attempt the, the, uh, and, and bridge the synthesis gap, but we are also trying to advance WASH evaluation practice by understanding what works for WASH intervention and um, gender and social um, equality outcomes, under which conditions uh, these WASH interventions lead to gender and social equality outcomes, uh, how, what are barriers and facilitators, etc. So these are uh, the questions, the key questions, the key questions that we are trying to answer while um, reviewing uh, the literature. Next slide, please. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, so um, we will talk uh, in the rest of the session a lot about gender and social equality outcomes, but we are wondering what words come to your mind when you think about these kind of outcomes in the context of uh, WASH interventions. So if you can um, see your answers uh, and your thoughts on this, um, and you can obviously add more than one word Excellent. Great. 
great. We can see a lot of uh, participants uh, mentioning empowerment, participation, Excellent. Okay, so while I think uh, if if we can get to the next slide, yes. So as as you could see from the from the previous slide, I think we have a very similar uh, ways of thinking <laughs> when it comes to gender and social equality. So uh, most of the issues that have been mentioned in the in the previous slide, actually, we are covering um, in this reviews. So in this review, we are focusing on any type of what we call inclusive and transformative gender and social equality outcomes. By inclusive um, outcomes, we refer to improving access and use of WASH for all users. And by transformative outcomes, we refer to addressing power, the outcomes that are able or the issues that are able to address power relations and harmful, harmful, sorry, harmful gender norms that hold us back from achieving gender equality and other forms of social inclusion. It is also important to emphasize that we are uh, including any types of WASH interventions, um, such as um, infrastructure provision, health messaging, uh, triggering, uh, system-based approaches, etc. But we are not including studies that are not actually evaluating interventions, which means that, um, um, for example, if someone studies a, a general concept of mental health related to poor water supply, um, this will not be included. We are focusing on any types of um, um, uh, lower and middle income uh, country contexts, including uh, dif um, participants uh, from different gender and social identities, age groups, and across uh, urban and rural settings in the literature in the last 10 years. Uh, this is just a quick overview of the review uh, process. And Ariana is just sharing the link to the protocol uh, of uh, this uh, mixed method systematic review that we are attempting that we are um, conducting. So in that protocol, you will see all the methodological details um, about it. But I will not spend uh, too much time on, on the methodology. Um, in this uh, review, we will be focusing on the outcomes of our presenting preliminary findings um, of the mapping of the study um, of, of the studies and general overview of the studies that we are including in this review. Um, however, the findings of the that will include uh, assessment of the study validity um, and uh, the synthesis of the findings will be available uh, later this year. Next slide, please. Uh, this uh, slide is just to uh, briefly show you the amount of information we are dealing uh, with in this review. We started with 76,000 uh, search results and after deduplication and uh, different levels of screening, uh, we will be today presenting you results uh, from um, 285 uh, studies that we included on our eligibility criteria that I showed a little bit earlier and that are um, uh, coded on, on, um, on the types of interventions, types of outcomes, types of settings, etc. Next slide, please. With this, I will um, hand over to my colleagues, uh, first Ariana and then George, that will explain and um, share with you emerging findings from this review. Ariana, please. Uh, yeah, thank you, Viviana, and hi to everyone also from my side. So uh, as you can see in this slide, uh, coming to the types of research included in the project, uh, there is a re relatively even split across the different lines of inquiry. Uh, so you can see that we had 39% uh, of quantitative research and 33% of mixed method research and 28 of qualitative research. So most of the studies we included were actually uh, quantitative. Uh, next slide, thank you. And uh, here, um, can you guess uh, which aspect of WASH was most common in, re in review studies. And so now you're invited to try and rank these four aspects. So hand washing, uh, water supply and quality, uh, menstrual hygiene management and sanitation. And uh, we can see what, what you think and which are actually your uh, guesses. Uh, Oh, 
okay. So this is your, uh, oh, it's still changing. Okay, so you ranked uh, water supply and quality, it seems first. Maybe we wait a second more and see if someone else is also typing an answer. Still moving. <laughs> okay, but I guess this is maybe the final um, answer. So maybe we can, yeah, we can move to the next slide. So here you can see that in alignment with your uh, suggestion, uh, most of the studies are actually about water supply and quality. So around 38% that is followed by sanitation, 33% and then um, hand washing, 23%. While uh, menstrual hygiene management and other hygiene are, have a much lower uh, percentage. We can yeah, move to the next slide. Here we can see uh, that the types of intervention more included in the project are behavior change and infrastructure provision. So those are the co most common ones. And among behavior change intervention, we had mostly health messaging and not triggering. Um, here we can see more about the types of outcomes included. So the bulk of the literature reports are about what we call inclusive outcomes, and you can see them uh, highlighted in light blue. And less reports uh, talk about transformative outcomes, which are visible in yellow orange. And Sarah explained in the introduction already what we mean about inclusive and uh, transformative outcomes. And uh, we are going to discuss in our reviews mostly the transformative outcomes highlighted in red. So we have particip participation, for example, participation in community decision making, uh, time such as time spent on unpaid work and drug dairy, uh, such as water collection. Then we have empowerment and agency, uh, for example, autonomy at the household uh, level and economy and livelihood opportunities, for example, the creation of businesses related to, to WASH. And now when we zoom in into specific uh, WASH sectors, we can see again, again that inclusive outcomes are, are actually predominant, but in the case of water, also time use and participation in water committees are discussed very frequently in the literature, as you can also see from this uh, graph. And now I will hand over to my colleague, George, that we will finish to present you the findings from our review. Thank you. Thank you, Ariana. I'll take you the next set of results and now uh, you'll be happy to start off with a question. And um, we are asking you if you have noticed any outcomes that are important but are not uh, represented in the literature. If you could give us that response in a minute. You have access to space as a new response that was not represented in the literature. You have self-confidence as another outcome that was not captured. You have access to land. Uh, then someone says being stopped from using wash products or services. Conflict over water is another result that is not represented. Another important one is norms, traditions, and value systems. We can take a few more seconds to post your reactions. Also have dignity is another result that is not uh, represented in the literature. Adaptation to climate change is a very important one.
You also have water as an asset. You can have 10 more seconds and then we go to the results on what we found out. A readership of women leadership also coming out as an area as a result that is not captured. Mm -hmm. decision making for marginalized groups and I think there are so many uh, findings that are coming out that are not adequately represented so in our study um, you came up with the different subjects that we covered that are covered by the studies and uh, those that are not disaggregated are the highest and then you have uh, uh, women and adults coming as, as, the, as a subject area that was covered by most of the studies then we have uh, uh, poverty and disability as um, of the some of the subjects that are risks covered by the studies Next slide, please. Then we have the intervention targets, and we found out most of the intervention we are targeting households and quite a number targeting schools. And we also found that the health facility uh, is one of the targets that had the very least interventions. And this is an area of concern given the importance of health facilities in the wash sector in general. Next slide, please. And now, uh, then we are happy to ask you to guess what proportion of intervention had an explicit gender and church equality component. We could also take a minute to reflect on this question. We have uh, people observing that norm not include a GSC component coming up at the top there. Number of others saying yes, that were included in the GSC components. Some majority of people are coming out strongly that uh, the intervention did not include a gender and social equality component. If we could go to the results now, we find that uh, the intervention with the gender and social equity component, uh, the intervention that did not have a gender and social equity comp component capping uh, at the top there, with, uh, which is uh, in line with uh, what you had with your guesses, the guesses you just made, and a lesser number of uh, uh, intervention having a gender and social equity component. Next slide, please. Then we tried to learn our findings according to the geographical settings on where this, the interventions are made. And we find most of the intervention uh, being done in Asia, specifically in India, and um, a number of them in Africa and Kenya coming out there uh, having uh, and the most interventions in the region. And we also found that most of these interventions were from a rural setting and a few, fewer from an urban setting. And in the urban setting also, we had the informal and formal urban settings. We have quite a number in the informal urban settings. 
next slide please and we'll ask my naomi kalak to take us uh, through this this poll question thank you for your attention Thanks so much, George, and hi, everyone. I'm going to take you through the very last Menti question for this presentation. And so what you've seen today in the presentation are what the evidence base is, what's included, what's addressed. And through the presentation, my colleagues have highlighted some of the gaps uh, that are coming through. And what that speaks to is the fact that we need to learn more about gender and social equality outcomes associated with WASH interventions. And what we'd like to hear you share here uh, what you think priority areas are for future action and research. In a previous slide, you raised some really excellent suggestions for the kinds of outcomes you've seen that are missing from the evidence base. So that could be a good place to start. And what we'd like you to share here is what you think are priority areas for future action and research. Okay, so someone's suggesting intersectionality, which is a really important area that's gaining traction in the WASH sector and definitely warrants more focus. That's coming up a couple of times already. Yep, gender and social norms is a, a really important area to grapple with. There's people talking about engaging men more, um, people trying to speak to the idea of theory of change. What are the mechanisms for transformative change? Talking about inclusion of women in an economic frame and particularly private sector participation. Also differential access to wash services by gender, age and other stratifiers. So speaking there to the importance of disaggregated data um, across a range of different um, characteristics of people. Okay, climate change is coming up here as it did on the previous slide, and that's really great to see and really important. And I, I've seen a few sessions coming up this week at, at Stockholm. Uh, World Water Week focused on climate change and it'll be really interesting to see how gender and social equality outcomes are brought through in those discussions. Yep, disability inclusion, gender-based violence, participation. Yeah, these are a, a great set of, of research priorities. Transformations coming through a few times. Inclusion of women by other women. So that idea of collective power and, and um, people enabling others role of groups, healthcare facilities, that definitely is a, a priority based on the data that this systematic review is finding. Women's leadership and capacity building on gender and social equality. So that's a great set, thank you very much for that. And now I'm gonna pass over to Carla, who'll speak to the next component of the session and, and give you some guidance on, on what the next interactive component will include. Uh, thank you very much, Naomi. Um, hello. So now I'm going to talk you through the interactive session, the working session that we have coming up. So during the next 40 minutes, we will proceed with breakout sessions too. Well, first of all, in the first task, we'll ask you to share your story of change. So we'll ask you to actually collaborate with like what has happened on the field for you, what have you seen, uh, and so on. And then for the second part, you will help us modify our own theory of change. So you will be able to contribute to uh, yeah, our theory of change. So for this, you will be divided into four groups. Uh, you will be able to choose which groups you, you're in. And the four groups are livelihoods, education and empowerment, uh, time use, uh, decision making, and participation and leadership in WASH government. Um, so you will be able to, to do this. Uh, once you're inside that group, uh, one of the moderators from this group will share a link with you. You will click on that link. And next slide, please. Um, and next slide, please. Yeah, here. So once you click in, the, in this group, uh, you will be directed to a working group in Miro. So your working space would look like this uh, board right here. And you will be able to work with post-its, mostly to write your ideas in post-its and everything. Uh, in order for you to zoom in to your board, you need to go and click on the, um, on the plus sign or the minus sign. So if you want to zoom in, you click on the plus, and if you want to zoom out, you click in the minus. Uh, please bear in mind that there's four boards. 
So if you want to actually collaborate to the one that you chose, you have to make sure that you're on the one that says, for instance, time use or participation. So make sure you're in there. Um, and now I think Brenda will open the groups that you are going to, to be able to join. In case you're not able to join a group or you don't understand, you, uh, Brenda will allocate you. So, <clears throat> You should, yeah, I see that people are joining groups now. Um, there's time use, there's decision making, participation and leadership. Brenda, I can you please add me to time use group? <laughs> 